Jared Poland. Frono's photo. Dot com and I would have liked to have called this a review of the light L16, but my hair's down uh, and covered up by a hat, so I, it, it doesn't really warrant a review, but that's not the truth. The truth of the matter is when they sent me this in the mail to review it, I played with it a little bit, and I realized that this isn't something that I wanna carry around with me. Now, a couple of years ago, light was the talk of the town because they came out with this camera or this idea that they were gonna do computational style of photography with 16 different lenses and ways of responding receiving images into this camera and then computationally putting them together to create an image that's much larger than it is. And then of course, when they came out with it, they talked about how it's gonna replace your digital SLR. It's digital SLR quality in a smaller package. And yeah, it's a smaller package. Oh, they also told you that it would fit in your pocket. Now, maybe it would fit in your pocket if you wore some Jenko jeans, but if you wear skinny jeans and tight jeans like I do, it's not quite gonna fit in your pocket. Now, Light has raised over a hundred, I got it right here, I got it on Crunchbase, $185.7 million they have raised to make this camera as well as work on the software. Because I understand that this is more of a play about the software than the hardware. I don't think they should have made hardware, but the hardware that they did make allowed them to create the buzz and the interest to allow them to focus on making this camera a reality and getting the algorithms and the software ready to go. Because the software that you find in something like this or that, that's behind putting together all of these lenses to make an image at the very end is something that a company like Google would like to have. And I'm pretty sure that Google has dropped money on light by making an investment. Now this does run on Android and I will tell you that it takes forever to load up to go and start taking pictures because it has to load the whole operating system and that was you know, one of the hindrances on for me not wanting to shoot with this. Now the founder basically said that he wanted a camera that he could take with him that, was, that would replace his DSLR with a bunch of lenses because this basically acts as three different lenses. You've got everything from 28 millimeters all the way up to 150. 50 millimeters. Do you remember Lytro? Lytro was all about software-based photography and they came out with a really crappy camera, which sucked. Then they came out with a second crappy camera that sucked a little less in terms of holding it, but it just didn't make any sense and they took a lot of money and they finally shut down recently. Now, trying to use this is difficult because it really feels terrible in the hands. You have to use this wrist strap because if you don't, it's most likely that you're gonna drop this. But there's really, you, know, you have a little indentation here on the back to put your hand, but everything's like dainty. You have to put your fingers like this to hold on to it because it's not really a grip, there's no grip to this. And part of the reason there's no grip to it is because they want it to fit into your pocket. The problem is, do you wanna touch all 16 lenses like that? Because now I just put fingerprints all over the front of this. There's 16 lenses now with fingerprints. It's just a weird design. I get it, I get the computational part. Now they also tell you in this camera they can do depth mapping. They can also allow you to change the focus after the fact. You know, that's kind of funny, yeah, because my iPhone can kind of do that as well. Now maybe it doesn't do it as good as this, but I don't want this in my pocket when I already have this in my pocket. We know that this has killed the uh, point and shoot industry. We know it killed the flip camera. It, it, it killed everything because everything is right here. This light, what it doesn't do is it doesn't allow me to make a call. It's too big, I don't wanna carry it around, and it was priced at $2,000. Now I found it online for $12.99, which is absolutely a steal, but you, you wanna know what it smells like? Don't buy it. It smells like don't buy it. I get what they're trying to do. I don't know why they're focusing on making this hardware because you're not going to do well by selling this hardware. There's so much competition out there. I mean, yes, there's not competition for this, but all the lenses, but in all honesty, the competition for this is a cell phone. I have my iPhone right here. Many of you people have pixels. They do the same thing. Now, it uses a lot of the technology, some of the technology that may be in here, that's why Google would make an investment, but this thing, I'm not even gonna say that it's ahead of its time. 
I just don't like when people come around and say, oh, this is going to replace your big camera and all those lenses so that you can travel around with it. Because I'm not gonna put this in my pocket next to my iPhone or my cell phone or whatever phone it is that you have. What I will say is that computational photography and algorithms will start to find their way into the Sonys, the Nikons, the Canons, the major camera companies, because you're gonna start to see that you have the ability to do more with algorithms and computations. It's gonna help your photography, it's gonna help my photography, it's gonna make us better photographers. This hardware, though it's a feat of engineering because they had to print all their boards and make all of this themselves, they did a great job with that. But again, when you're gonna design a freaking camera, can somebody put it into a photographer's hands and say, do you like the feel of this? It's, it's really crappy the way that this feels in your hands. Big, heavy, and I'm not used to things that are big and heavy in my hands. So I'm gonna leave it right there. I do wanna thank Light for sending it out and sitting on the phone with me telling me all about it. Uh, I think there was a pretty good possibility that they knew that I was gonna shit all over it, uh, and, and I did and I just, I didn't want to shoot with it. The couple of pictures that I took, honestly, my iPhone looked a little better. It was just easier to use. It's smaller and in my pocket. This thing, I'm not taking it around. If I'm taking this around, I'm taking a real camera. And yes, this is not a real camera. Let me cut in here real quick and say, I know you want to see some sample raw files. So over on the website at fronosphoto.com L16, there are five different full res JPEGs that you can look at. Now my friend Ted Forbes from The Art of Photography sent them over because he owns this camera. But take a look at these images, zoom in on them, look at how there's some inconsistencies when it comes to focus, as in part of the thing is in focus and then right above it, it's out of focus. So there are a lot of quirks. There's a lot of CA, there's a lot of distortion. It's just, it, it's not that good. And that's why I say that it seems like a cell phone can do almost as good of a job as this $2,000 camera. So go ahead, download those sample images and a big thanks to Ted for doing that. Now let's wrap up this video. So what do you guys think? Let me know what you think about this camera in particular. Would you purchase something like this? Or do you understand where the future is taking us with the computational photography and different algorithms. Let me know what you think down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll never get another light camera again, I am sure, because they probably won't send it to me at this point, but that's okay. Thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Poland Fronos, photo.com. See ya. Subscribe now.